Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and looks like there is something weird going on in the universe. Another unusual discovery that suggests the universe is very different from what we actually believed it to be. So let's discuss this in a little bit more detail and find out what does it actually mean to our understanding of the universe. Welcome to What The Math. So in the past, as we were looking around the universe, we actually have already discovered a few things that don't seem to be consistent. For example, more or less recently we discovered that the expansion of the universe does not seem to be constant everywhere. It seems to be accelerating a little bit faster in some directions than others. At the same time, we also discovered that um, the actual constant that we refer to as the cosmological constant does not seem to be constant either. It seems to vary with time and also with place. And on top of that, we've also been discovering these unusual spots in the universe that seem to be slightly higher in, for example, X-ray radiation than other spots, which altogether suggests to us that it seems that the universe is actually not what's known as isotropic. It's not really the same everywhere. And the recent discovery seems to actually kind of push this even further. But first of all, we have to discuss the idea of what's known as the fine structure constant, which also some scientists refer to as the most mysterious number and most mysterious concept in the world. And although some science fiction would make you believe that the meaning of life is the number 42, in reality, scientifically speaking, this number is 1 over 137, which in a sense represents the true meaning of life. This number seems to be extremely important, and it seems to be everywhere, and it also seems to be mysterious and completely unexplainable. This is what scientists refer to as the fine structure constant, and in a nutshell, it's sort of like the unitless number, basically a constant that seems to represent the strength of electromagnetic interaction of different electrocharged particles. In some sense, you could also think of this as the strength of electromagnetism, which of course is one of the four fundamental forces in the universe, and in some sense is also really, really mysterious and something we would really like to understand in a little bit more detail. But obviously because this is known as a constant, we've always believed this to be constant everywhere in the universe. Although there were a few discussions suggesting that maybe that is actually not so. And some scientists even suggested that maybe this number has kind of changed over time. In other words, it uh, grew by a little bit, suggesting that the number does change and is not a constant. But none of this was of course proven and was only a suggestion or basically an assumption. It was not really scientifically shown to be true. And there's actually a very important reason for why this number is considered to be extremely important and essentially, well, as I said before, the meaning of life. It's because it combines some of the most important constants within it. Right here in this formula you can see that this number combines the speed of light constant, the Planck's constant, and the charge of electron constant. All three are absolutely crucial to pretty much everything in the universe. And although it was officially introduced uh, over a hundred years ago back in 1916, even today we still kind of understand very little about it. And more importantly, some of the recent studies even suggest that it's probably not really a constant at all. At least it doesn't seem to be. And to try to learn more about how this number may have changed through time and through obviously space, and also to try to understand its connection to everything else in the universe, one of the main ways scientists usually study this is by looking at very distant objects known as quasars. We've talked about these many times on the channel, but essentially these are really, really bright points of light that create quite a lot of really powerful energy that sort of propagates through the entire universe for a very long time. So for example, let's just take this quasar right here that shoots out its astrophysical jet. All of its light will actually travel through the universe for billions of years, crossing many different galaxies, going through a lot of different matter, and eventually these super highly charged particles will actually arrive to Earth, and by studying these particles we can then sort of analyze what sort of materials these um, astrophysical jets pass through, these particles that is. And as these particles passing through various types of matter change over time, we can then actually compare it to what we have here in our own galaxy. Basically, if the constants are constant everywhere, the changes observed will be very similar to the changes we expect in the Milky Way. And so by the time that this right here finally arrives to our galaxy and finally sort of delivers all of this information to Earth, we can then sort of use it as a comparison to establish the facts about the rest of the universe. 
So in a nutshell, the distant quasar here will shoot out its light, it will pass through different galaxies, and with every galaxy pass, depending on the material it goes through, the light spectrum will actually change accordingly, and by the time that it arrives into our telescopes, we're going to get a certain type of a spectrum that we can then compare to the spectra from here on Earth. If these spectra match, it will suggest that everything in the universe is pretty much the same, the constants work similarly. However, if for some reason the light spectrum that we see is slightly shifted or actually is located in a completely different place from where it should be, this would suggest that something else is going on in that particular galaxy that the light has passed through. In other words, the constant in this galaxy may appear different from the constant in our own, including of course the fine structure constant itself, which is responsible for the electromagnetic forces, which also would imply that electromagnetism might work differently here. And interestingly, when you really start doing calculations here, the changes in this number, also known as alpha, can actually be quite dramatic. Like for example, if it's changed by about 4%, then the stellar fusion can actually no longer make any more carbon. And without carbon, you can actually not have any carbon-based life. And so assuming that alpha can be different by 4%, there might be galaxies out there with no carbon whatsoever. On the other hand, if this number is even greater, like for example, if it's approximately 0.1, it can actually reach the point where no stellar fusion will be possible at all. The stars will not produce anything, thus creating conditions of extremely dark and inhospitable galaxies with basically no life possible. At least not the same life that we have here on planet Earth. So any changes, any fundamental changes in this number would actually transform what's around us pretty much completely. Which is why it's important to actually study this in a little bit more detail, because what if it's actually not constant and it does change with place and time? And so this is kind of what the scientists behind this paper and also this paper did. Both papers focused on different things. One was studying the distant Type 1a supernova and their emissions from basically billions and billions of light years away, and the other one was focusing on quasar emissions. And in both cases there was a discrepancy. Basically they discovered that the fine structure constant seemed to actually change. In other words, both papers focusing on completely different things seem to indicate that the fine constant was actually a little bit different. So in other words, it's possibly not a constant. But there's also another really major discovery coming from one of these papers, and it's in regards to where it changed. It didn't seem to change everywhere in the universe. As a matter of fact, the scientists looking around discovered that, for the most part, it does seem to be constant almost everywhere. However, when they looked in two specific directions, I guess let's just call them south and north, this is when they observed something really strange. By looking in one direction, they were able to see that the constant kind of sort of increased with time. But by looking at the opposite direction, they found the opposite, that it was actually decreasing. In other words, it's as if our universe was actually directional and had, I guess you can call them poles? Or almost like dipoles. So kind of like a magnet. One side is north, one side is south. One side attracts, one side repels. But in this case, it seems to be related to the constant, the so-called fine structure constant, and on the one side it's increasing slowly, but on the other it's decreasing. However, if you were to look around the universe perpendicular, so basically looking left to right, the constant would be pretty much the same. It only seems to be changing in these two directions. Which is also not the first time we've noticed that something is going on in terms of directions of the universe. Not so long ago, we've also discovered and also mapped the motion of the universe, which you see right here, also suggesting that one side is moving a little bit faster and one side is moving a little bit slower. And there are actually a lot of other really interesting observations, including the variation in X-ray radiation in both of these directions. And altogether, all of this does seem to kind of imply that the universe is actually not isotropic, it's not the same everywhere, and it does seem to have this unusual pole-like structure. Basically, I guess let's just call it north and south, because this is what we've been doing with everything else um, on our planet. But what's really strange here is that a lot of things seem to change along this pole, including the so-called constants, the fine structure constant, the cosmological constant, and possibly a lot of other stuff which also has really big implications if this is true, if this is confirmed. Because if we do confirm this, 
It means that some of these distant galaxies in these regions will be completely different. There will be very different physics happening here, and there would also be extremely different, well, actually everything. Chemical reactions, electromagnetic reactions, gravitational interactions, and a lot of other things. And as a matter of fact, this also sort of gave a little bit more credibility to the so-called anthropic principle. It's the idea that states one of the reasons why humans exist here, right here on Earth, is actually because everything in the universe sort of aligned perfectly, including some of these constants that allowed us to exist. If, for example, some of these constants, like the fine structure constant, is different in another galaxy, not only can humans not exist, but no other life, and as I mentioned previously, no carbon life, not even carbon itself, could possibly exist. But as always, we definitely need a lot more investigations and a lot more observations before any conclusive decisions can be made. Specifically, in regards to the ideas of cosmology and, of course, investigating the universe itself. At the moment, we're still not entirely sure if maybe there was actually an error somewhere in our observations, or maybe this is something we're kind of misunderstanding from a completely different perspective, so it'll probably take a few decades, maybe even longer, for us to finally kind of come to a conclusion on what's really happening with a lot of these other galaxies really, really far away, long time ago in the early universe. And also, obviously, because right now our cosmology and pretty much most of our astrophysics are based on the idea of um, isotropic universe, or basically universe being the same everywhere, we're going to have to reanalyze and reinvestigate everything if by chance this study is correct and a lot of other studies confirm its results. For now, we're not really going to rush into these conclusions. For now, we're going to assume that universe is the same everywhere. Until further studies. But on that note, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. It's definitely a really interesting discovery and it's definitely a very interesting study, but we need a lot more before conclusions can be made. Once we discover what's happening with the universe and with all of these constants, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and consider supporting this channel on Patreon, it does help me quite a lot. Alternatively, you can also support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.